your brain works right, you work right. And when your brain is troubled, you are much more likely to have trouble in your life. So these are two brain SPECT scans. SPECT is the study that we do at the Amen Clinics. SPECT looks at blood flow and activity, looks at how your brain works. It's actually pretty easy to understand because it looks for three things. SPECT scans show us areas of the brain that work well, areas of the brain that are low in activity, and areas of the brain that are high in activity. So good activity, too little or too much, my jo job then is to help you balance it. So here we're looking at the outside surface of the brain. The top is the front part of the brain, the bottom is the back. Healthy is full, even, symmetrical activity. The color doesn't mean anything, it's just the shape. And then you see the brain to your right, and there are like all these holes in it. So this person actually doesn't have like real holes in their brain. The holes indicate areas of highly significant low activity in the brain, and it's everywhere. This is what a typical drug addict or alcoholic's brain looks like. I hate to break it to you. Alcohol is not a health food. No. <laughs> they typically, people who are drinking every day, have smaller brains. And when it comes to the brain, size matters. <laughs> So, simple principle, right? Your brain works right, you work right. Your brain is troubled, you're going to have trouble in your life. But if you really think about this principle with me, it is very disturbing. Because it directly attacks the notion of free will. Now, all of us think, you know, we all have 100% free will. And I would argue, after looking at 73,000 scans, most of us have about 80% free will. But if you've been in a bad car accident that damaged your frontal lobes, you probably are about 40%. And then if you get drunk, you're likely to do something really stupid. So with a healthy brain, you're happier, physically healthier. Why? Because it's your brain that makes every single health decision. And you have to make hundreds of them a day. You've had the opportunity at this conference to make many of them. Am I going to bed or am I staying up? <laughs> You're wealthier. Why? Because your brain makes every financial decision. You're wiser and you're more successful. When your brain is not healthy, for whatever reason, you've had a brain injury, you've had too much alcohol, you had mold growing in your house because of a flood and you had no idea about that. You're sadder sicker, poorer, less wise, and less successful. And this is what happens to the brain over time. It gets less and less and less and less active. It's an example of a 55-year-old. You can just sort of see the beginning pits and craters and holes, which is low blood flow to the brain. This is a typical 82-year-old. And we've scanned thousands of elderly people. On average, their brains suck. I don't know how else to say that. I think that's a medical term. <laughs> but this is my friend, Dr. Doris Rapp, who's also 82. Dr. Doris Rapp is a world-famous uh, pediatric uh, allergist. She's considered the mother of environmental medicine. Uh, she wrote a wonderful book called Is This Your Child? And she has a stunningly beautiful brain. Why? Because throughout her life, she exhibited the habits that would keep her healthy. And at 82, she's still playing tennis, one of the world's best brain games. Right? Table tennis is the best one because you have to think a lot more in table tennis. She eats right. She's not overweight. She's passionately engaged in the work that she does. Her life matters. She has meaning. And she has a stunningly beautiful brain. You can too. But the first step is brain envy. You have to want to have a better brain. 
So my goal when you walk out of here later on is that you love your brain and that you start taking care of it. There are 18 studies now that show as your weight goes up, the actual physical size and function of your brain goes down. That should just scare the fat off anyone. <laughs> I published this study in uh, Nature's Translational Psychiatry. Actually, this is in Nature's uh, Obesity Journal, that we looked at our normal group, and we looked at our overweight group versus our normal weight group, and the overweight group had low frontal lobe activity. You know about your frontal lobes? They're really important. So the front third of your brain, largest in humans than in any other animal by far, 30% of the human brain, 11% of the chimpanzee brain, 7% of your dog's brain, 3% of your cat's brain, which is why they need nine lives, they have bad judgment, <laughs> and 1% of the mouse's brain. They do all these interesting studies on mice and try to relate it to people, forget it. Mice are missing this very important part called the prefrontal cortex. The obese people who had a BMI over 30, they had 8% less brain tissue. That's like 8 billion less cells. And their brains look 16 years older than healthy people. And without a healthy brain, nothing in your life is as good as it can be. Not your work, not your relationships, not your money, not your health, nothing. And so I read that study, and then I am on one of my public television tours, and I'm on my way to Iowa, and it's one of these little small planes, and an obese person was sitting next to me on the plane, and I got the urge to reach over and say, you just don't want to be a dinosaur. You know dinosaurs, right? Big body, little tiny brain, become extinct. 